Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Soft Rep Radio, Soft Rep Radio on time, on target. We have a very special guest with us today. Dr. David Eagleman is going to talk to us about an issue that's near and dear to a lot of veterans. It's uh, tinnitus or ringing in the ears, I guess you could say. And I, I was just telling the doctor online, I, I know audiologists call it by a different name. And we'll talk about that. I felt kind of dumb when I found out that, but... Uh, it's, it is isn't a laughing matter. I mean, uh, a lot of us suffer with this, myself included. I've been suffering with this ringing in the ears for over 25 years. Uh, and so we're going to welcome Dr. Eagleman to the uh, podcast. Doc, thank you for taking the time with us today because this is uh, an issue that probably affects more than a billion people worldwide, I would imagine. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, it's 15% of the population has this ringing in their ears. And obviously, this is more common in the military because of the damage to the inner ear, to the, what are called the hair cells. They just happen to be called that in the inner ear, um, which can get damaged with really loud sounds like explosions and gunshots uh, nearby, things like that. And so a lot of people suffer from this. Um, for anyone who doesn't have tinnitus or tinnitus it can be pronounced either way uh, for anyone who doesn't have this um you know this is something that drives people uh often to the point of to the brink of suicide i mean it is a really big deal to have a constantly screaming sound going on it can be ringing or buzzing or cicadas or staticky noise but it's it's a sound that never goes away and it can be really distressing to people Right. And before we get any further, and I do want to talk about this at length, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Eagleman is an author, he's a neuroscientist, he's a technologist, he's an entrepreneur. And uh, can you fill us, our, our listeners, in a little bit about your own background? Yeah, very briefly. I, so I'm a neuroscientist at Stanford, and I, um, <clears throat> and I, uh, love to write books as well. So I've written uh, eight books now about the brain, different books. Uh, they've been, I'm, ha I'm very happy that they've been um, international bestsellers. Um, 32 been languages. To teach a lot of uh, 32 languages. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I've been able to bring the stuff that, you know, gets me out of bed in the morning to, to a wider audience. And then I made a <clears throat> documentary on PBS called The Brain with David Eagleman. And uh, that is also around the world. So that's really nice. And then what I did is about six years ago, I spun off a couple of companies from my laboratory. Um, and I'm now spending about 90% of my time uh, running these companies um, instead of just running a lab. So that's yeah, the and, entrepreneurial and the most, part. You know, when you talked about tinnitus, or I'll, I'll just keep calling it the way I, I I've learned yeah, for so long. Um, the most frustrating thing for somebody who suffers from that is that, you know, it only you can hear it. And like when I've been to the VA, they, they told me, oh, you don't have that. And I was like, how can you tell me what I'm hearing? And, and as you mentioned a, a few moments ago, it's, it's extremely frustrating, especially when the room gets very quiet and you're trying to go to sleep at night. And that that buzzing gets really loud. It gets seems to get louder. And, uh, you know, my wife was one that had to have the room completely silent and completely dark. And because of my issue with my ears, we sleep now with the television on just for the background noise. And it kind of drowns it out and softens it a little bit so I can sleep. Is that common? Yeah, yeah. So, so again, it's about 15% of the world that has this. It's more common in the military. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just unbelievably frustrating. And, and I'm actually really surprised. I don't know why the VA told you you don't have it, because typically it's just a matter of subjective report, as in I'm, this is what I'm experiencing. It's typically caused by damage. So when, <clears throat> when you're losing part of your hearing, essentially your brain is running a – defensive activation and it says oh wait I, I was expecting this frequency to be coming in but now I'm not really getting that anymore so your brain starts generating that frequency so actually like all of hearing it's really not that much to do with your ears it's everything to do with your brain and uh, your brain starts screaming off some particular tone 
Yeah. That's and the, 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 I, the frustrating part is that there's no, there's no available, there's no cure for it. There's nothing easy that can be done. People are working on genetic techniques, for example, to say, hey, can we actually genetically engineer the birth of new hair cells in the ear? You know, things like this, which are very uh, admirable pursuits, but it's going to be a long time before something like that actually exists. So in my company, we ended up um, developing a a very simple uh, approach. It's not a cure, it, uh, but it drives people's tinnitus down by about, by about 33%, which is quite significant for people's lives. Um, should, I, should I tell you about that? I mean, should I? Yeah, absolutely, you know, because that, I wanted to jump yeah. into that and, and, and explain how this works, because I, I, I saw you on a podcast talking about it, and I, I read an article about it, but it kind of went right. <laughs> <laughs> it went right over my okay. head. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's no. really, it, yeah, it's really straightforward. It's just what we're doing is we're so so we've developed this wristband that has vibratory motors on it. So it's got these different motors on it, and so different frequencies of sound get you, you feel them on your wrist in different places. So high tone you feel let's say on the left side, low tone on the right side, and everyone in between. Okay. What we do then is we play tones, boop, 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 boop. And as that's going, you're feeling this on your wrist. So every time you're hearing a sound, you're feeling it as, as a vibration on your skin. And you do that just for 10 minutes a day. And it turns out that what this teaches the brain essentially is what is the difference between an external sound, which gets verification on your skin, Versus mm -hmm. an internal sound like your tinnitus, which is only heard in your head and your wrist is not feeling that. And that teaches your brain, oh, this is actually just an internal sound. And so it starts paying less attention to it and it becomes less, uh, less loud and less aversive. And so this is something, technically, this is called bimodal stimulation, which just means it's in two modes. We're playing a sound and you're feeling something on your skin. We didn't come up with this. It was actually um, at the University of Minnesota and then a group in Ireland did this where they were shocking people on the tongue at the same time they were playing notes. And that worked super well. And those results, they, they published um, I don't know, a couple of years ago now. And when I saw this, I thought, wow, I wonder if this would work not shocking on the tongue, which is, by the way, very expensive, and you have to go into the audiologist's office every day to do this. Um, but instead, you know, with this wristband that we already had uh, developed for other purposes, and so we started testing with this almost a year ago, and it works exactly as well. So we have um, we've been uh, making this into a two-month rental program, so that people rent this; it gets shipped to their house. They download the free app. They listen to boop, 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 boop. They listen to these sounds every day and they feel them 10 minutes a day. And then after two months, they just stick it in the box and send it back. And it's worked so well for thousands of people. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a really lovely thing to, to see this you know, take a hold in the market. Now, now like uh, the two-month program, how did you guys come up with that? Is, is like after two months, is your brain trained enough that you, you really don't require that anymore? Is that how you came up with that? Th that's exactly right. So when we look at the studies, what we find is that after two months, you have about as big a result as you're going to get. In other words, over the first you know six, seven weeks, things are really steeply changing. By about week eight, it's pretty stabilized. And then it lasts a long time. And so in this study from Ireland where they did this bimodal stimulation, um, they tested people a year later and found that the results held. The amount of improvement they had stayed, stayed the same after a year of not using it any longer. Really? And, you know, yeah. um, your so, company now, it said, uh, you said people just rent it. Um, so yeah. they, they, what is your, your company name is what, Neo Sensory? Is that the name of it? It's neosensory.com. Yeah, neo like new senses. Yeah, neosensory.com. And, uh, and this program is called the Neo Sensory Duo, this thing with the, the wristband plus the, plus the sound. And, and one of the things that we offer that a lot of people really liked is we pair this with um, two audiologist visits. So just for a little bit extra, people can get these telepresent visits to the audiologist at the very beginning and then at the end of it so they can check in and get their questions answered, that sort of thing. That's been really... That's been really useful as well. 
And uh, yeah, so th this is available to to anyone. Anyone can uh, contact your company. Yeah. And, well, within and, the United and, States, yeah, we're only we're only shipping within the U.S. right now. Eventually, we will keep expanding to the rest of the world. But right now, now do you have audiologists yeah. that? Like, say, for instance, I live in the state of Florida. Do you have somebody nearby that you would pair up with? Is this What we're doing now, and this, of course, is inspired by, you know, coronavirus, is everything is uh, virtual. So we're doing oh, telepresence okay. visits, yeah, which is super useful. It actually makes the whole world easier. And, and you know, coronavirus has really been awful in so many ways. But one of the, one of the tiny silver linings is that it's really increased <laughs> telemedicine uh, you know, 10 years, it sort of punched it up like that. Everyone, everyone's expected telemedicine to be a thing. And now it finally is a thing. That's cool. And yeah. um, what, what is the cost for this? Uh, it's $249 per month. Um, and then it's an extra $99 to see the to see the audiologist. So it'd be about $350 for, for yep. like the, the entire program uh, for yep. per month for two months. And then it should, you know, uh, decrease your your ringing by a, about a third, which is that's pretty substantial. I, I would love to have We've a had... third less ringing in my ears at night. Exactly, and and not only does it drive it down, but what what uh, almost everyone reports to us is that they just find it less aversive. They just find it sort of less anxiety provoking. Um, now, by the way, it works for 87% of people in, in our studies and in the other studies in Ireland. And, uh, you know, about 87% of people find success with this. 13% don't. We don't yet know why. We're still um, exploring uh, who those 13% are. Um, but, you know, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So anybody who after, you know, during the first 30 days feels like this is not doing any, because during the first 30 days, you can clearly tell that it's working. And if it's not working, you just return it and get your money back. Also, wait, I should just mention, because I'm on this podcast, that we have a discount for veterans. Um, so it, that's running for the next, for the next week. It's, um, yeah, discount code honor and, uh, and you get a, you get a discount for that. That's awesome. And now, you know, the wristband itself, I, I know you said there's a sound. Is, is there like an electric impulse or uh, some kind of a pressure thing as well? It's vibration. So, so think about it like, um, you know, the, the buzz of your cell phone, your cell phone uh, vibrates and you feel that buzzing. So yep. imagine multiple of those motors along your wrist. And so it feels just like a, a, a little pattern of vibration on your wrist. Okay. In different locations, right. yeah, yeah. And now, um, and, and I can show you for those for those who are not uh, listening to the audio only, but watching this on YouTube, you can see the wristband has these bumps on the inside, and these are each these oh, actuators, okay. these uh, vibratory motors. There, yeah, those are along the inside on the wrist. And um, I know that uh, I, I was reading somewhere, and you know, for most veterans, the causes. Uh, you know, exposure to weapons, explosions, artillery, take your pick. But I was reading somewhere that a, a lot of the population, the, the causes are quite different, aren't they? Um, yeah, actually, it's, it's essentially anything that's causing these cells in your inner ear to die. And there are a million reasons for that. And even for non-veterans, you know, they go to loud concerts, they whatever, they sure. work in a kitchen where there's lots of banging of pots and pans, whatever. So there's a lot of reasons that can happen. Actually, there, there are 220 different genes that have been found that correlate with, with people losing hearing. Um, and the reason I mentioned that number is just to illustrate that it's just an enormous number of ways that you can lose the integrity of your inner ear. And all of those can cause tinnitus. Exactly right. Yeah. I, I I remember after I got out of the military, I was already suffering with it. I uh, had the uh, good fortune of being on stage because a friend of mine was traveling with the band Metallica, and I was on stage at a Metallica concert, and my uh, my whole head was ringing for about four days after that. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, it's it's so. I wouldn't have traded it for the kids... world. <laughs> 
Well, that's interesting because sometimes in retrospect, people would trade these things. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, tough because it. kids really want to go to concerts. You know, young people want to do things that are loud. I, you know, I have two kids and I'm always, I'm probably overly protective <laughs> trying to get them to not do loud things because I don't want them to suffer when they're older. Yeah. 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 But, um, you know, is there is there any hope on the horizon for someday being a cure for this, or are we looking way, way in the future? Unfortunately, I think we're looking way in the future. And as I said, I think the best hope is going to be figuring out how to use genetics or stem cells to regrow damaged cells in the inner ear uh, to make them healthy again. But But these cells, just like all the cells in your brain, actually, don't divide anymore. I mean, they're they're already they're set, and when they die, they die. That's it. You don't get new ones, um, and so that's the problem generally with hearing loss. And tinnitus just goes hand in hand with hearing loss. Yeah, because um, I, I was curious. I mean, you know, reading about it, I, I was curious. Do you consider it more of a brain issue or an ear issue, or is it a little bit of both? It, well, it's mostly a brain issue. It starts in the ear because, so the brain is expecting a certain amount of input coming in through the ears. And then eventually, let's say post Metallica concert, you're not getting any, you know, this particular frequency anymore coming in. Then your brain says, what is going on? I'm going to, I should generate that frequency. Um, so, you know, after the ear gets damaged, it's all about the brain uh, from then on. And, you know, by the way, we, we originally developed this wristband for hearing loss in general, not for tinnitus in particular, it was just for um, when people have, let's say, severe or profound hearing loss, what, what this wristband does, there's a microphone built into it, it's listening to all the sounds, and it's representing those sounds, it's breaking them up into frequencies from low to high and putting them on your skin. And you can hear the world that way. So for people who are deaf, they say, oh, you know, someone's knocking on my door, there's a dog barking, there's a car passing, there's a baby crying my doorbell's ringing, these sorts of things, they're all feeling it on their skin and it's tremendously liberating for them. And you know, it opens up the world to them because now the world of sound, which was closed off to them, becomes, becomes open. And um, you know, it was through developing that for the deaf community, which has been very successful. In fact, we're, in, we're on wrists all over the world uh, for people with hearing loss. Um, it was through that that we realized, hey, this also works really well for tinnitus because these are so closely related issues. Um, also, we're about to put out a new product next quarter for age-related hearing loss. So as you get older, you lose just the high frequencies. Your, your brain is still doing fine at the low stuff, but you lose the high frequencies and then, and then speech just becomes more effort to understand because you can't tell if someone said feed or seed or you just can't tell the difference between certain sounds uh, in the alphabet. So what we've done now is we're using machine learning on the wristband to listen for those particular sounds like F's and S's and TH's and D's and V's. And we buzz in different ways when the wristband hears those different sounds. So in this case, it's just listening for speech and it tells you, oh, I heard this and this. So what this means for someone with age-related hearing loss is that their ear is doing most of the work at the low frequencies and the wristband is just clarifying what's happening at the high frequencies. And, and I know uh, talking to you offline, you have a uh, family from a military background. Yep. And yep. Uh, is that how you got into this? Um, no, actually, I got in just from, you know, just, uh, you know, as a neuroscientist looking at this issue of what's called sensory substitution. But let me say, yes, everyone in my family has been in the military and it's uh, something I'm very proud of. And I'm a big supporter of the military and so, so proud of you guys for what you do. And thank you guys all for your service. So um, I'll tell you how I got into it. I'm, I'm a neuroscientist and started wondering about this issue of how can you get information into the brain um, via unusual channels. So we're used to getting information through, through our eyes and our nose and our mouth and our ears and stuff like that, our fingertips. But um, I thought, gosh, could you feed in, let's say, sound information through the skin? Would that work? And there, there was evidence, there was reason to think that would work already in the literature. So I set out probably 10 years ago now to, um, to see if we could do this. And we originally built this as a vest. Um, it, it, looks, uh, it kind of looks like a bulletproof vest but it has these vibratory motors all over it. 
and is capturing sound and translating that into patterns on your torso. And people can come to understand the auditory world this way. And that worked really well. So I gave a talk at the TED conference uh, about six years ago now, and, uh, and then spun this company out of my lab, um, which has been just a very, it's been a very terrific. So what we did as a company is we, you know, we, the first thing we did is we shrunk it down from a vest to a wristband. And, and as I said, now we're on wrists all over the world. And it's really great to see the impact that has. Yeah, that was you. You already answered my next question because I, I had read that you had made it originally in a vest, and I was going to ask how large it was. I mean, when you talk in a vest, you you're uh, assuming there's these great big, you know, circles of uh, receptacles or whatever you want to call it on there, and how you shrunk it down into uh, the wrist. I was glad you're a able to show that to our people who who will see it on YouTube. Because it's really thin. It's it's as thin as for those who are just hearing the audio, the the uh, wristband is is as thin as any kind of like uh, one of those Fitbit. workout watches that people are. It's so popular with today, and yeah. Uh, it, yeah, that must exactly. have taken and some doing. That took some doing. That's exactly right. And you know the truth is that the vest was sort of a proof of principle for us to demonstrate. Wow, this is possible. This is actually going to work. Um, but then, you know, once you start a, a company, which was, by the way, very educational for me because I had just been in academia and then I moved into the entrepreneurial world. And, yeah, I realized there's all these issues about making it so that people will actually use it and wear it. And I realized that nobody wants to wear a vest. Nobody's going to wear a vest around every day. Um, yeah. So we shrunk it down. I mean, I've got this terrific team. All the credit goes to the all the folks involved in the hardware and the firmware and the algorithms and so on and the manufacturer of this. And. And now, um, yeah, so now it works as a small product. And this is actually, um, you know, this is our first version, which has been very successful. But, um, you know, in future versions, we'll get it even smaller and smaller as battery density increases and the rest of the world moves forward in tech. We can take advantage of those moves. Yeah, you know, it was funny because, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I found out to you uh, about you and your company through, you know, one of your people, Andrea. Icardi, who was on uh, with us before we started recording. And I, I thought he was like a tech guy, like a possible uh, neuroscientist like yourself, but he's like in the music industry. And as we talked about how he came about you was he had hearing loss and ringing in the ears as well. I thought that was really interesting part of uh, your company there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, in fact, um, yeah, my my former graduate student who I co-founded the company with, he's also a musician and, you know, but like Andrea's father's a neuroscientist and he's, you know, Andrea lives in the tech world. And so this was an intersection for him. <laughs> Pretty much everybody who works at our company, there's some intersection there of interest in tech, interest in the brain and uh, interest in the entrepreneurial world. That's awesome. And um, again, uh, folks, you know, if, if you're like myself and thousands of other veterans, neosensory.com. I mean, uh, and again, uh, you guys are offering a, a uh, veterans discount. It, it, I mean, a 33% reduction in, in that ringing in the ears would be substantial. And we yeah. definitely want to encourage yeah. all of our listeners out there and our readers for softrep.com to check this out. If you know yeah. somebody who's a veteran that's suffering yeah, with this. Yeah, that's right. And also, you know, I want to say, I mean, tinnitus is just, it's a big, it's a big issue with veterans, um, but also hearing loss in general. And so there's lots of, a lot of people pick this up for tinnitus and then find that it's really useful for them just for being able to hear everything that's going on. And as I said, we're about to release this new thing next quarter which will be for you know if you're just having trouble with high frequencies so you know if anyone's having high if everyone's having hearing loss in general the thing is um as you probably know a lot of people who should wear hearing aids don't wear hearing aids and part of the reason is that it's socially embarrassing for people nobody wants to feel old nobody wants to feel like they've got something wrong and so um, one of the advantages this has had for us is that, as you said, it looks like a Fitbit and um, no one even notices you're wearing it. And uh, with our 
next product that's coming out for high frequency hearing loss, someone, one of our study participants just wrote to us and said, it's better than his $6,000 hearing aids in terms of allowing him to understand speech. And so I think this is, I think this is just a sort of a funny side note about social, whatever, what allows people to, to wear something and it's just been very useful. So I, you know, I hope anyone out there who's suffering from hearing loss will, will consider trying this out. Yeah, and you know, as for somebody who wears hearing aids as well, right now I have my earbuds in for for the you know for the podcast, but I wear them, and it does help with uh, not only hearing, but it does muffle a little bit of that tinnitus sound. But you can't wear them to bed. But uh, this, you know, yeah. you, you're like you. I didn't want to say Fitbit because I thought maybe that was a you know uh, one of those. It's almost like a common noun now Propri- instead of proper, proprietary yeah. term. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, people would be more apt to wear that than they would a hearing yeah. aid, like you said, which is, uh, that's really cool. And, uh, you know, Doc, I, I, I really want to thank you. I know you have other appointments to do today, but this is, like I said, this is a near and dear issue to myself and other veterans. Hearing right. loss is no joke. And, ringing in the ears especially at night like i said when you're trying to sleep is really really difficult and this is something that could possibly work for a lot of our fellow veterans and uh, and again neosensory.com dr eagleman before we let you go is there anything you'd like to add you know i'll just i'll just add two things which is um you know, one of the things we've been doing on the website is we have these, uh, you know, people write in endorsements, but they're verified through a third party company. So if anyone's curious, you can see the, the, the experience that other people have had with this and so on. But, you know, I'll just mention one other thing, Steve, which is this is a method for pushing information into the brain via patterns of vibration on the skin. And so we actually have several other things going on um, where we feed in not only hearing information, but other kinds of projects like, uh, you know, for example, if you're flying a drone, we can feed in the pitch, yaw, roll, orientation and heading of the drone directly into the skin and into the brain that way. And people can come to sort of be one with their drone. We're doing all kinds of military applications that are very cool with this. Uh, You can see infrared, for example, we can hook up an infrared camera and you feel the infrared information on your wrist. Things like this have been uh, very cool for us. But wow. what, what, we're, you know, what we're concentrating on now, just from the point of view of the company and how it runs, is, is this issue of hearing. But I think, especially for those in the military, you'll be seeing more and more of us uh, as we're doing these other projects. Yeah, I, I was going to ask if there's a lot more applications that you could use that, that wristband for. And it sounds like... There we is. Have, yeah, we actually have 70, 70 uh, applications oh. under development right now. And so actually, if anyone's curious, you know, when you go to the website, you can click on uh, the developers link and see all kinds, or you can click on the blog link and see all the different things that we're doing. Yeah. But our main thing in this context, you know, is hearing and, and the ringing in the ears that so many people have. Well, that's yeah. great. And again, to all our listeners out there, we we definitely recommend you guys check this out, neosensory.com, Dr. David Eagleman. Doc, thank you very, very much for joining us today. We appreciate your time uh, and all the work you're doing to help our fellow veterans. And again, if you check out the website, they're, they're offering a veteran's discount. And if this can help uh, with hearing loss or your tinnitus, all the more power to all of us because uh, we could all use a little bit of a help you know, wherever we can get it. But before we go, and uh, we want to thank our guests today, but if you want to get SoftRep on your phone, download our free mobile app and get easy access to our articles, podcasts, and gear reviews, all perfectly formatted to your device. Please subscribe to SoftRep.com to get access to our library of eBooks and our exclusive team room forums and content available on all your Apple and Android devices. We want to thank our guest today, Dr. David Eagleman. Doc, thank you very much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. And, you know, uh, I'm going to check out your website as soon as we're done here. I would like to get a little relief as well. Terrific. All right. Well, thank you, Steve. And to everyone listening, thank you so much for your service. And we'll look forward to talking to you guys soon. 
Take Thanks. care. And from all of us here at softrep.com, we'll be back with another podcast real soon. From all of us here at softrep.com and softrep radio, thanks for listening. We'll be back.